Assalamualaikum. I'm Muhammad Sami. I'm third year exam. Shikharthi. I'm going to take some exam. Why? 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 In case of CBS examination, the first thing any doctor would do is that inspection of the precordium. The precordium is the surface underlying, overlying the heart. It is called precordium. So, in case of inspection of the precordium, we see the natural hair distribution. If there is any kind of engorged vein, if there is any kind of deformities like any kind of scar marks, which will indicate if there were previous operations in the patients in case of uh, heart or poor effusion or etc. So, in case of this patient, we see the pericardium, there are no scar marks, there are no visible pulsations or anything, there is nothing uh, like any kind of deformity like hair distribution is normal in case of the patient. So, the pericardium in case of this patient is fine. So, we represent it like this, after my inspection, the pericardium is uh, the hair distribution is normal, there is no uh, any kind of uh, engorged vein, there is no any kind of scar marks and there is no any kind of physical epicastic pulsations. So, this is the examination of the pericardium. Then the second thing we see is we have to do is that we have to uh, palpate the mitral area which is also known as the apex of the heart. So, to do that first and uh, the one of the most important things to notify is that the mitral area is uh, generally situated in the fifth intercostal space in case of any normal patient. So, in this patient, uh, the first thing we do in case of the palpation of the mitral area is that we count from the uh, manubrial sternal joint and we count the spaces, intercostal spaces. So, in case of this patient, this is the manubrium sternum and this is the second intercostal space ok. So, second this is the third intercostal space. So, third intercostal space after third this is the fourth intercostal space and this is the fifth. We can see that the fifth intercostal space here is just below the nipple. So, mitral area is situated uh, in the fifth intercostal space just below the nipple medial to the mid clavicular line. This is the clavicle of the patient and this is the mid clavicular line. Okay, going through the nipple and this is medial to the mid clavicular line. We hold our fingers like this. These two fingers should be situated on two ribs and there will be a gentle push by the middle finger. By pushing gently, we should palpate the apex bit like this to see if there is any kind of thrusting or something like that which would indicate the pulsation. Okay. So, by indicating the pulsation, we can trace the apex bit like that and that will be our mitral area. So, in generalized terms, sometimes uh, by doing this uh, procedure, we can, uh, we are sometimes unable to find the apex bit. In that situation, what we will we do is that, bhai, ek tukhane edhi ka kathon, halka, halka asthe. We just turn over the patient a little bit left laterally, so that the apex becomes uh, nearer to the uh, upper uh, outer surface and we can find the apex bit like this. This is the position where there is the apex bit. We should not remove the finger from actual the place where we actually test the mitral area. So, we should not because once we have removed the finger, it will be very difficult for us to again find it. So, what will we do is we actually take the measuring tape, we put it gently here where we actually test it and then measure the distance from the sternum. So, it is actually 9 centimeter away from the sternum which is the normal distance of the apex bit from the sternum and the midline of the body. So, this is the way to find the apex bit. So, now we have completed the apex bit. Okay. So, this was the mitral area and now what we are going to see is the uh, palpable P2. Now, palpable P2 is the pulmonary component of the second heart sound. So, in case of every heart sound there are two components. In case of second heart sound there are two components. One is aortic component, the other one is pulmonary component. So, where should we, should we generally find the pulmonary component? This was previously said that this place where the sternum, manubrial sternum and the body of the sternum joins in the sternal angle. 
So it's the second intercoastal space, right? So in case of second intercoastal space of the uh, left side, this is the pulmonary area. And in the right side of the second intercoastal space, this is the aortic area. Okay. So we look for the palpable P2 in the left area, like this. We see just gently put our hands like this and then put it here like this and we just uh, try to feel if they if there is any of pulsation in our hands okay so we can see that there is no visible or there is no feelable pulsation so the pulp over p2 component is absent here so now uh, in case of the left parasternal hip what we we'll, we have to do is that we can do it by uh, putting the uh, ulnar border this is the ulnar border of our hand we can gently put it like this and see if there is any kind of thrusting then we have to uh, put it like this above so no there is no any kind of thrusting in case of the patient and uh, left, para, left parasternal heat is genuinely find, found in case of uh, mitral stenosis and in case of right ventricular hypertrophy. So we can see if there is absence of left parasternal heat which indicates the patient do not have that kind of complications in him. Now we are going to palpate if the that if the patient has any kind of thrill present in him. So what will we do? Previously, we have found the mitral area which was in the fifth intercostal space here. So, now we take the three fingers like this and put it in the this area like this to see if we can find any kind of thrusting or pushing. So, this was the mitral area we did not find any kind of thrusting or abnormal pushing like effect here. So, this was the fifth intercostal space above the fifth intercostal space in this is the fourth intercostal space fourth intercostal space is known as the tricuspid area. Okay. So, in case of the tricuspid area we are also have to find the thrill. So, we just put our fingers again like this and see if there is any kind of visible or feelable pulsation like this. So now we are going to check for thrill in the pulmonary area which was previously stated that it was in the second intercostal space here. Now again we are going to look for in the aortic area which is in the second intercostal space to the right side of the body. Now if we had found any kind of abnormal feelable pulsation in each of the four areas then what we have to find we have to find that is the thrill systolic or diastolic now how to find it we have to say the patient by to edik edik mukkaran now the most easy way for me to detect the carotid artery which uh, sometimes uh, out of uh, frustrations in the exam uh, students always mistake is that this is the angle of, of the mandible right so we just take the thumb put here now there can I can actually feel the carotid pulsation like this. So now again I am going to check for the thrill in the previous places where I actually felt the thrill. It can be in the mitral area or in the aortic area. I mean the position I found the uh, thrill previously I am going to check for the thrill again and I am going to examine if the thrill consists with the same uh, pulsation of the carotid artery. If it coincides with the same pace of the carotid artery, then it will be systolic. If it does not coincide like tumar pulsation, carotid artery pulsation or thrill, age pore hoche, tile it a diastolic thrill. Okay. So, a dui bhavam raida mane bhalo kare mane check korte bari. So, I am going to examine right now. So, in case of this patient, because the thrill is absent, we do not have to check for its uh, diastolic or systolic. Last thing to check is the epigastric pulsation that we have to palpate. 
it is uh, actually uncommon and more common in case of if your patient is suffering from malnutrition and if he is uh, very kind of lean and thin or if he is suffering from such an heart abnormality that is actually uh, responsible for that kind of uh, pressure that causes. But genuinely we do not actually uh, palpate uh, the epigastric pulsation. Okay. So, this is the epigastric area we are uh, generally placing our hand like this to see if any kind of thrusting is present here or if any kind of uh, visible uh, fillable pulsation is here. So, we are just going to check like this. Okay. So, done. So, now what we are going to do is that we are going to percuss the patient's precordium to see if there is uh, the if the percussion node is normal or but the percussion node can be abnormal in certain uh, situations like if there is pleural effusion or there is pericardial effusion. In certain abnormalities, we uh, somehow sometimes uh, get the abnormal percussion node. So, how to do percussion? We begin in case of precordium uh, from the second intercostal Unlike the respiratory system, we start from the clavicle, but in case of pericardium, we do not actually go for the clavicle, we go for first start in the second intercostal space. So, we are gently actually putting our hand like this and using this only the middle finger like this. Now, to do percussion the force of the percussion uh, of this hand should be generated not from the elbow, I am actually stating again not from the elbow, always the force should be generated from the wrist. So, now how to do percussion? We just hold it like this gently not actually pressing too hard so the patient gets hurt, we do not want that. Now, we put these two fingers on the two adjacent bones like this and gently put it like this. Okay. like this we percuss. So, that percussion was normal no problem then we go for the third intercostal space right. Again. Then four. Now five now four so, now in case of the fifth genuinely the precordium dullness or cardiac dullness is felt in the fifth intercostal space right because that is where the heart is lying. So, at this place we should get it dull. Okay, normally we should get it dull. If you do not get it dull or if the dullness increases, it can mean certain conditions like there is pleural effusion, which is cause of abnormal pericardium dullness, okay, pericardial dullness. So, the further we are going down, we are actually not getting dull because here the heart is actually overlying this area. Okay. Do not actually mess it with liver. In case of liver, the fifth or sixth intercostal stress will actually determine the upper border of liver dullness. In case of pericardium, the second intercostal stress should be the percussion node should be normal. Okay. In the third, if we are doing here, I mean more laterally from the midline, it will actually generally sound normal. But in case of this area, because it is underlying the surface of the heart, fourth and fifth you should always actually determine that there is heart. Okay. So, the percussion node in these two spaces should not be like uh, resonant or normal. Normal I mean that it should be not like that sound like that in the second there it was resonant. Okay. When we were in the third most laterally it would be still resonant. When we are medially because there is a heart underlying it should not be resonant like the previous second and lateral of the third intercostal space. We have to bear in mind that this is actually normal, this is not abnormal. In case of left, it is not abnormal. It would be abnormal in case of right. Okay. We have to bear in mind this such of the, uh, these things that now uh, we have examined the precordium and the percussion rate is normal. So, after examination, after clinical examination, we can see the patient's precordium percussion node is normal. Okay. In the exam hall, if the teacher directly asks you to perform auscultation on the precordium, then you have to bear in mind that you have not yet actually palpated the mitral area. So, you can just put the stethoscope like this, does not matter that you know it is in the fifth intercostal space and in the patient it might be at the same spot, but you have not performed palpation yet finding the position of the mitral area is part of palpation. So, you always have to ask the teacher that sir, I am going to palpate the mitral area, auscultation, 
আমি কি এটা করতে পারি দেন সার উইল সে ইয়েস ইউ ক্যান প্রসিড দেন হোয়াট উইল ডু ইউ উইল হ্যাভ টু গো থ্রু দ্যাট প্রসিজিওর দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ টু প্লেস ইট ইন দ্য ফিফথ ইন্টারকোস্টার স্পেস জাস্ট মিডিয়ালি টু দ্য মিড লাইন সো নাও দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ প্যালপেটেড অ্যান্ড দিস ইজ দ্য এরিয়া বাইট সুদাহন নাও উই গোয়িং টু অস্কালটেড দ্য পেশেন্ট স্পিক অডিয়াম তো ফার্স্ট উই হ্যাভ টু টেল দ্য পেশেন্ট গিভ হিম সার্টেন ইনস্ট্রাকশন দ্যাট আমি যখন এই যন্ত্রটা আপনার বুকে রাখব তখন আপনি জোরে শ্বাস নেবেন যখন আমি আপনাকে শ্বাস নিয়ে ধরে রাখতে বলবো তখন ধরে রাখবেন যখন আমি আপনাকে বলবো যে শ্বাস ছেড়ে দেন শ্বাস ছেড়ে দিয়ে ধরে রাখেন ঠিক আছে তখন শ্বাস ছেড়ে দিয়ে ধরে রাখবেন ঠিক আছে বুঝতে পারছেন ধন্যবাদ অর উই আর গোয়িং টু অলওয়েজ পুট আওয়ার থাম্প ইন দ্য ক্যারোটেড আর্টারি লাইক দিস টু সি ফিল দ্য ক্যারোটেড পারসেশন ইফ দ্য পারসেশন ইজ কোয়িং সাইডিং উইথ দ্য হার্ট সাউন্ড নাও উই আর গোয়িং টু অস্কালটেড শ্বাস নেন ছাড়েন ধরে রাখেন বেল সো উই আর গোয়িং টু স্লাইটলি টার্ন ইট অ্যারাউন্ড লাইক দিস নাও উই আর গোয়িং টু পুট ইট ইন দ্য মাইটাল এরিয়া পেশেন্ট আপনি একটুখানি জোরে শ্বাস নেন ছাড়েন ধরে রাখেন নাও উই আর গোয়িং টু টেল দ্য প্যাশেন্ট ভাই একটুখানি এদিকে কাথন ধন্যবাদ শ্বাস নেন ছাড়েন ধরে রাখেন ওকে ধন্যবাদ সোজাহন সো টু বেয়ার ইন মাইন্ড দ্য ইন কেস অফ মাইটোস্টিনোসিস দ্য মারমার অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডাজেন্ট ট্রেডিয়েট ইফ দ্য হার্ট সাউন্ড ওয়াজ প্রিভিয়াসলি স্টেডেড ওয়াজ ফার্স্ট হার্ট সাউন্ড ওয়াজ সফট দেন দ্য পেশেন্ট উড হ্যাভ বিন সাফারিং ফর মাইটার ডিগার্জিটেশন ইন কেস অফ মাইটার ডিগার্জিটেশন উই হ্যাভ টু অ্যাগেন লিসেন উইথ দ্য ডায়াফ্রাম নট দিস টাইম বাই দ্য বেল ওকে সো ইন কেস অফ মাইটার ডিগার্জিটেশন হোয়াট উই হ্যাভ টু ডু দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ টু হিয়ার ভাই জোরে শ্বাস নেন ছাড়েন ধরে রাখেন আচ্ছা একটুখানি কাত হন জোরে শ্বাস নেন ছাড়েন ধরে রাখেন জোরে শ্বাস নেন ছাড়েন ধরে রাখেন ওকে ইন কেস অফ সোধন ইন কেস অফ মাইটার রিগার্জিটেশন হোয়াট উই হ্যাভ সিন দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ টু ইউজ দ্য ডায়াফ্রাম অফ দ্য স্টেটোস্কোপ উই হ্যাভ টু প্লেস ইট ইন দ্য মাইটার এরিয়া অ্যান্ড দিস টাইপ অফ রিগার্জিটেশন মাইটার রিগার্জিটেশন দিস টাইপ অফ মারমার ওকে অলওয়েজ রেডিয়েস টু দ্য এক্সিলা সো উই হ্যাভ টু অ্যাগেন টোল দ্য পেশেন্ট টু বি লেফট লেটার অ্যান্ড দেন উই হ্যাভ টু প্লেস দ্য স্টেটোস্কোপ ইন দ্য এক্সিলা টু সি ইফ দেয়ার ইজ এনি কাইন্ড অফ রেডিয়েশন টু ডিটেক্ট দ্য অ্যাওটিক রিগার্জিটেশন অফ দ্য পেশেন্ট ফার্স্ট উই হ্যাভ টু অ্যাকচুয়ালি টেল দ্য পেশেন্ট ভাই একটুখানি উঠে বসেন সো ইন কেস অফ দিস টু অ্যাকচুয়ালি সি দ্য মারমার সো হোয়াট উই হ্যাভ টু ডু ইজ দ্যাট অলওয়েজ পুট দ্য থাম ইন দ্য ক্যারোটি ডাটারি লাইক দিস ধন্যবাদ একটু ধরেন then we are gently actually placing in the aortic area to detect if any there is any kind of sound it is juken samna diye now we are going to press it, uh, press the diaphragm of the stethoscope in the fourth intercostal space to see if we find any kind of murmur we are examining in this case uh, is aortic regurgitation okay by shashnan ফ্রম <laughs> uh stenosis murmur then again 
would have said the patient by Shashnen, Shashcharan, Dhoirakhan, like this. And if the sound was like aortic stenosis or some sort of that, then we would actually press it upper portion of the clavicle right here to the neck. Shashnen, Shashcharan, Dhoirakhan. Again, Shashnen, Shashcharan, Dhoirakhan. In case of aortic stenosis, the sound of the murmur would always radiate to the upper side which would be uh, above to the uh, clavicles. So, after our clinical examination, we have to tell the uh, ask the sir that sir I want to actually examine the base of the lungs for any kind of presence of bilateral basal crepitations which are actually signs for left ventricular failure or left heart failure. So, uh, we are not exposing here like this. Uh, so, uh, after having permi asking permission from the teacher, we would just place the diaphragm of the stethoscope in here because uh, this is the uh, thoracic 7 uh, vertebra which indicates the base. Now, we uh, tell the patient, bhai, ito khanai shashnen, shascharen, shashnen, shascharen. So, we can find any kind of basal crepitation in this area. So, the patient does not have any kind of basal crepitation which indicates there is no left ventricular failure. And the some other things that we should check in case of a patient suspected for left ventricular failure is that we have to check for galopridum and we have to check for pulsus alternus. These are three clinical signs for left ventricular failure. And if the patient had right ventricular failure, then there will be other three clinical signs also. One is the patient would have been ankle edema present, the patient would have been suffering from tender hepatomegaly and the tenderness of the tender hepatomegaly would be uh, felt like just pressing the liver and the patient's uh, uh, natural uh, facial expression would have told us that he is actually feeling some kind of pain. And the uh, last thing and the furthermost thing is that in case of every patient of suffering from right ventricular failure would have uh, raised JVP. So, uh, measuring JVP is not that much difficult, you know it is just two scales, the patients will be actually in the 45 degree angle like this, you have to take two scales and in case of patients suffering from raised JVP, you have to see if there is any kind of pulsation here, okay. So, you have to take two scales like this and one scale will from mark from the upper border of the pulsation and another from this, okay. So, this height this height that we have measured would indicate the centimeter in the SGVP. So, these were the actually clinical examination of the precardium. I hope you have learned something from this video. Thank you.